Following the election results, reactions from both sides of the political spectrum can be seen nationwide. But how are the political parties reacting here on campus? We have the details. President-elect Joe Biden released the names of his coronavirus task force members today. Who's involved and what's to come? One company's data shows that its COVID-19 vaccine is more than 90% effective. When the vaccine could be released and how it would reach the public. And Kent State officials are urging students to get tested before going home for the holidays. Information about the next mass testing event only on TV2 News. This is TV2 News. Good Monday evening, Portage County. It was a busy weekend and we have everything you need to know regarding the presidential election. So that's where we'll begin. I'm Jenna Borthwick. And I'm Nadine Vita. Democrats and Republicans across the country are showing their support or disapproval of the 46th president-elect following, following election results. But what is the reception like here on campus? Our own Chris Abreu got in touch with Kent State's Republican and Democratic student organizations to find out. Hi, Chris. That's right, guys. The election results had a difference in reception throughout the country, with some feeling relieved with President-elect Joe Biden's apparent victory and others calling for recounts due to alleged voter fraud. Either way, it was made clear that all this election talk isn't going anywhere anytime soon. President-elect Joe Biden's apparent victory in the 2020 presidential election caused a widespread reaction throughout the country after the announcement. Here on campus, President of the Kent State Democrats, Tyler Gardner, helped me get an inside look on their response to the results, showing a more relieved feeling, while Vice President of the Kent State Republican, Seth Kolner, is not so convinced. Um, I'd say the last 24 hours we were feeling pretty good, feeling like this was the likely outcome, and just getting it, I think, was just uh, a weight off of all of our shoulders. I I'm still, I'm not uh, fully convinced yet. Uh, I'm still waiting to hear what goes on once the votes are ratified and everything. Um, and I think that's important for all Americans to do is to keep watching that and not necessarily jump to that conclusion. Gardner continued to express dismay towards the Republican reaction to Joe Biden's apparent victory nationwide, while also commending the Kent State Republicans for releasing what he called an appropriate statement. I mean, I think it's been disheartening broadly. Um, you know, it's not across the board. I know our friends at the College Republicans put out a statement recently saying they congratulate Joe Biden for appearing to be the, the winner. There has been much talk of a potential recount in certain states over the past couple of days. Both Gardner and Colner agree that the phenomena surrounding this election is far from over. Recounts are not typically very fruitful. We all knew that Trump losing wasn't the end of this phenomena, that there's still work to go. Well, I know that there was already a request for a recount in Wisconsin. I, I don't think this election is going to be officially decided until early December. Both Gardner and Kohler are certain that you will see the election in the news for a while longer, which includes Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's address to the American people last Saturday. Right, Jenna? That's right, Chris. President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris addressed Americans following their election win. The two spoke to millions of Americans across the country and thousands in attendance outside of the Chase Center in Wilmington, Delaware. CNN's Daryl Forges has more on their message to the nation. Celebrations continued across the country into the early hours Sunday morning as thousands of people hit the streets following the news that Joe Biden had become the president-elect. I sought this office to restore the soul of America, to rebuild the backbone of this nation, the middle class, and to make America respected around the world again. Vice President-elect Kamala Harris also spoke to the large crowd in Wilmington, Delaware, acknowledging her role as the first woman to be elected to that position. What a testament it is to Joe's character that he had the audacity to break one of the most substantial barriers that exists in our country and select a woman as his vice president. As world leaders offer their congratulations and support, President Donald Trump, for his part, has still not conceded. 
Trump and his most ardent supporters continue to claim election fraud, even though there has been no evidence. We are calling bluff on the Biden win. We don't really believe that he won fairly. While a few counties have reported technology glitches and the need to rescan some votes, only minor changes were reported. While Biden was addressing the nation as the 46th president-elect, the Trump campaign says the race is far from over. President Trump is reportedly continuing to push his attorneys to pursue legal challenges that would delay formal certifications of the results. Sources close to President Trump say that he's, been, he's being urged by his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, attorney Rudy Giuliani, and campaign advisor Jason Miller to hold rallies throughout the U.S. pushing for recounts of votes. This comes a day after Kushner reportedly approached the president about conceding. In a tweet this afternoon, President Trump announced he has fired Secretary of Defense Mark Esper. Trump posted that Esper was terminated, but thanked him for his service. A senior defense official said Esper prepared a resignation letter a few weeks ago amid mounting tensions. According to the president, Christopher Miller will take over the role in an acting capacity. Miller most recently served as the director of the National Counterterrorism Center. President-elect Joe Biden announced the members of his coronavirus task force today. The task force will be co-chaired by former Surgeon General Vivek Murphy, former Food and Drug Administration Commissioner David Kessler, and Dr. Marcella Nunes-Smith of Yale University. The group will consult with state and local leaders to help steer the federal response to COVID-19 once Biden takes office. According to data by John Hopkins University, the U.S. reported its third straight record spike in daily new coronavirus cases on the day Biden was declared president-elect. 90% is a game changer. 90% now you are uh, hoping to have a tool in your war against this pandemic that could be significantly effective. That was Pfizer CEO Albert Borla speaking after the company announced early data shows its COVID-19 vaccine is more than 90% effective. Pfizer said in a news release it anticipates seeking emergency use authorization from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration by the third week of November. The company says it expects to have more than a billion doses manufactured next year and it would be free to Americans. Hello, all Portage County, Northeast Ohio. I'm TV2 weather anchor Owen Amador Gorby, and man, has it been a hot one out there today with the temperatures in the 70s. Currently in Kent right now, it is 61 degrees with a feel like temperature of, of a whopping 72, with dew points at 51, with winds northwest at 50 at 5 miles per hour, with visibilities at 10 miles. And I just realized I forgot my clicker. I am so sorry. Oh boy, this is. Oh boy. Um. Okay, folks, sorry about that. I made, I goofed up there. I forgot my clicker. How about that? Um, all right, so let's get on with the show here. All right, so <laughs> across Northeast Ohio, it is in the 70s right now towards Cleveland, 61 in Kent, 73 towards Sandusky. Starting to cool down as the sun goes down, but we still are getting some 70s in the, in the big city areas, you know, heat, heat island effect, you know. Um, but anyway, uh, as we go throughout your tonight, it is going to be 63 Clear skies, midnight 58 with clear skies, and your 5 a.m. 57 with some clear skies. So it's going to definitely be a very starry night out there, folks, as we approach the uh, towards the evening. Um, as of right now, uh, we, we will be expecting this to be occurring. Uh, you know, with temperatures like this, it will be very nice and warm, and um, we will be seeing more of that to come as we are anticipating you know, cold air coming through. Uh, that's all I have for now, folks. Please stay tuned for my full forecast because we will be talking about a major cool down occurring this week. Back to you guys at the news desk. Kent State is making more adjustments to its emissions process. We can have how this can help future flashes. Ohio's coronavirus cases continue to surge. We have the details on last week's numbers and where Ohio stands compared to other states. Longtime host of Jeopardy, Alex Trebek, <laughs> passed away yesterday after a battle with cancer. How his family and fans across. <laughs> oh, 
awkward. On the awkward silence. You try to avoid me, then there I am again. But an awkward silence can be a great thing. Like Kelly here is about to demonstrate. You haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at SeizeTheAwkward.org. I don't remember how it started. Oh Our back and forth. It always came back. Nice kid. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. The black truck? Hey. Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. You wanna see some photos of them that I took? I don't. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Buzz and overshared again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna call a car. That's a smart idea. So, yeah, I know, that's why I did it. Hey, you're gonna get back to the top of the mountain. Does that mean I'm gonna get back with Christina? No. Oh. Welcome back. Kent State is waiving application fees from now until December 1st. The university has already made other changes to the admissions process, such as waiving ACT and SAT test requirements. The university says it's using a more holistic approach to determine student admissions. Additionally, all applicants are automatically considered for merit-based scholarships. For more information, visit KSU Admissions at kent.edu slash admissions. Sticking on campus, many students living in residence halls were quarantined at one point during the semester, making for a tough transition for resident assistants. Our reporter Grace Hare spoke with two RAs about their time during COVID-19. The email they sent to uh, me and the residents was that there would be a Zoom meeting where they would discuss with us all of the, the things that would happen, we, they would answer any questions. We got a notice saying that uh, our floor would be under quarantine for the next two weeks. So within a few hours, a lot of the people just packed up and went home. Students in Fletcher were encouraged to get tested for COVID and email the school if returning to home. Before I left and when I got back, uh, there was still food piled up that I had to go and throw it myself. You know, most of the, most of the, uh, the experience is the same across quarantine and isolation. Students utilize residence hall scrutinies and any emails given to them to stay in touch on what to do during quarantine. I wish I had not known that residents were able to free after isolation. So when it came to like the four beyond quarantine, they were clear. But when it came to stuff like people coming from isolation, it was not as clear uh, and, and they weren't as uh, informative with us. Most of the people, when they found out our floor was under quarantine, they just all went home. Um, and everyone was pretty obedient of the quarantine itself. I mean, a lot of us hung out with each other on the floor just because we're, we're all thinking, you know, we're all under quarantine together. I remember uh, the day they sent out the email that our floor would be quarantining and that there would be more information to follow. I kind of asked every, I like sent the group me, everyone peek your heads out of the door and I kind of shouted down the hallway, like telling everyone this is serious, this is not a joke. For more information on Kent State's response to COVID-19, please visit the KSU webpage. I'm Grace Hare reporting for TV2 News. And all across the country, there have been people taking it to the streets to celebrate and protest the outcome of the election. Thousands of people rallying for Biden's monumental win and Trump's ongoing claims that the election was rigged have sent people to mass gather in large cities. But doctors say no matter how you feel about the outcome, these gatherings on both sides are extremely dangerous. These crowds are seen as the country breaks coronavirus case records as we are at our highest case count since the start of the pandemic. And the U.S. has surpassed yet another milestone. The total number of cases since the pandemic began has gone over 10 million. That's according to John Hopkins University, which posted the numbers this afternoon. The U.S. has more cases than any other nation in the world, and it is spreading faster than ever. COVID-19 has claimed more than 237,000 lives in the U.S. COVID-19 cases in Ohio rose by 4,706 to 254,974 cases. Deaths rose by 7 and hospitalizations rose by 154 to over 20,000. 
Governor Mike DeWine and health officials addressed the, the record numbers of COVID-19 hospitalizations in the press briefing today, reinforcing the public to wear masks and practice social distancing. Hello everyone, I'm TV2 weather anchor Owen Amador Gorby and here is your top weather headlines for this Monday. As you can see right here, summer-like temperatures were, were reported today all across Ohio with temperatures in the 70s. It was a go gorgeous day out though. Cold front will be returning this week, uh, this upcoming Wednesday, bringing rain and cooler, cool, cooler temperatures in the 50s and 60s. And that will also continue into next week as a fall-like pattern will stay throughout next week with temperatures up in the 40s and 50s with cloudy skies. So it's going to definitely feel like fall, unfortunately. But today definitely wasn't like fall. It was like in the 70s. So uh, across our state, we are starting to go down into our fall temperatures again as the sun's going down. 58 in Akron, 53 in Columbus, 50 in Cincinnati, 59 in Lima still. So as you can tell, it is definitely starting to cool again. And it's no longer going to start feeling like summer, unfortunately. Um, but of course, across our area radar, uh, nothing's been going on. Uh, winds going up towards the north, but n nothing crazy going on at all, uh, except for out towards our west. But you, I mean, obviously, can't see that here. But uh, yeah, nothing really exciting to report today, which is good. However, that will change this upcoming week as as we look over here towards your Wednesday. A cold front will be approaching from Canada, bringing in some rain and some really yucky weather, unfortunately. But it's that time of year, so that's what's going to go down. Um, but as you can see towards your hourly forecast here is so your 6 a.m. We will be at clear skies, uh, 56. And, but for your noon, for your noon time, it will, we will get up into 70 degrees. But towards 6 o'clock p.m., we will be going back down to 68 with clear skies. Uh, and your seven-day outlook, it is going to be a very nice uh, it's going to be a very nice uh, Tuesday, but then towards Wednesday as that cold front comes through, it's going to bring those rain showers and that fall-like pattern, and that's going to continue. But we will be experiencing some sunny skies towards your Thursday, but then we will experience clouds in the 50s on, for your weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Towards your Sunday, uh, it will also start to rain, unfortunately, and that, will, that may even continue with, with the 50s. That's all I have for you guys. Please stay warm out there as those pumpkin spice latte temperatures will be making a huge comeback this week. Enjoy this warm weather while you still can. Back to you guys at the news desk. Thanks, Odin. Longtime host of Jeopardy, Alex Trebek passed away yesterday at age 80. This comes after the host announced in March 2019 that he had been diagnosed with stage 4 pancreatic cancer. The death was confirmed by show producers in that episode of the show he hosted would air through December 25th. No plans have been made as of now for a replacement. The host drew legions of fans to rally him as he hosted for a record-setting 37 years. As a man, you know, he was an amazing dad, uh, and I, he loved Gene um, so much that uh, it was inspirational. So what I told him was I wanted to thank him for showing me how to uh, be a better man at work, and even more importantly, a, a better man with my family and my wife. He was, um, he was really that great. With Kamala Harris elected as the first woman vice president, young girls across the U.S. are using her election as an inspiration for what they can accomplish. It's good to be back, everybody. I have my Monday Flash Sports Report filled with Kent State news, Browns news, and high school football news, all coming up next. Don't touch that dial. As it turns out, we have very similar personalities. And this cat makes me make art because he's always motivating me to take pictures of him, to draw pictures of him. He just is motivating artistically. It's just that simple. Well, he's my best friend, but a lot of people know the cat. fouls are pretty dumb but if you decide to drink and drive underage you could lose your license and your freedom underage drinking and driving the ultimate party foul 
And now, your TV2 Sports Report. Good afternoon, Kent State and all of Portage County. It's good to see you all again. I'm Dante Serafonti, back with the remix of this Monday Sports Reports. Tomorrow night will be one of the great rivalries in the Mid-American Conference. It will be renewed as the football team heads to Doit L. Perry Stadium to face the Bowling Green Falcons as they look to defend the University Trophy. This will be the 88th meeting between the two Ohio universities. Now, last year, the Golden Birds had an offensive outburst of enormous proportions. Dustin Crum stuck his claim to the number one spot at QB by throwing his first of many 300-yard games as Kent State defeated BG on homecoming 62-20. Now Bowling Green is looking to rebound after a blowout 38-3 loss to arch-rival Toledo at the Glass Bowl. This is the first time they are opening up at home against Kent State since 1972, back when Nick Saban, Jack Lambert, and Gary Pinkle were suiting up for the flashes. They look to start 2-0 for the first time since 1988. Kickoff is set for 7.30 tomorrow. The game will be broadcasted on ESPN2, but TV2 Sports and Kent Wired will provide the best updates and coverage from Bowling Green, Ohio tomorrow night. The Browns had a bye week yesterday, or last week rather, but received some pretty big news. Quarterback Baker Mayfield came in contact with a staff member of the organization who tested positive for the coronavirus, and he has been placed on the Browns' COVID-19 reserve list. Now with a negative test, Mayfield can be back on the practice field in Berea by Wednesday. He is in a mandatory quarantine at the moment. All meetings for coaches and players will be conducted virtually in Berea this week. Running back Nick Chubb will be back on the gridiron this week. The Browns announced today that Chubb has returned from the injured reserve list. He practiced today, and according to Mary Kay Cabot of Cleveland.com, he looked good going through individual drills, but did practice with a full brace on his right knee. The Browns are back in action this Sunday at First Energy Stadium against the Houston Texans. Kickoff is set for 1 o'clock p.m. You can catch the game on Fox 8. And the last PTC program still alive in the OHSAA high school football playoffs are the Warren JFK Eagles. They look to go back to the state championship game for the first time since 2016, and the stadium they will play the state semifinal at will be the iconic Paul Brown Tiger Stadium in Maslin, Ohio. Kickoff against the Newark Catholic Green Wave will be this Friday at 7 o'clock p.m. TV2 Sports will be there and provide updates and coverage throughout the night. Be sure to tune into Sports Corner tonight at 8 o'clock with Austin Arnold and I as we will have the full highlights of Warren JFK's regional final victory over Lucas last Friday. TV2 Sports was at Molenkoff Stadium and we will have the full highlights coming up tonight at 8. Nadine, Jenna. Amid all the stress of the election, members from TV2's own show, The College Voice, know how to relax with some fun trivia. We'll see you back in 90 seconds. do anything for kids. Yet one in six children in the U.S. struggle with hunger. Help end childhood hunger near you. Learn how at feedingamerica.org. It's a big responsibility. Oh, it's huge. I know, it's huge. Yeah, and the salary. Oh my god, yes. I right? mean, like, I was literally, I was about to move in with my parents, and <laughs> right before, the, yeah, so this saved me. I, I really believe in you, you know. Thank you. It's nice to hear that from someone. <laughs> These are cool. Did you, um, what did you? Welcome back. Everybody loves some trivia, and since we're in the middle of an election, why not throw American history into the mix? Members on our own show, The College Voice, participated in a presidential trivia game to see just how much they know about our nation's past presidents. All right, guys, I know it's the election week and everybody is all ra rallied up, but let's do some lighthearted quiz show fun on the College Voice. So today I'm going to be asking Anna and Salitra some American-style questions to see how well they truly know our country. Me. Who, oh gosh, this, okay. <laughs> Who was the shortest president oh, at no. five feet, four inches tall? 
A, James Monroe, B, Thomas Jefferson, or C, James Madison? <laughs> Monroe? No, it was C, <laughs> Madison. Madison? Oh, he was short. I, learned, I, learned, I know his name. Okay, well, next. Okay. <laughs> Who received one million on his 21st birthday? A, John F. Kennedy, B, Richard Nixon, or C, William, Cl William J. Clinton? A. Yes. What? One million on his birthday? I mean, I wish I'd that take was my that. birthday present. Yeah. Okay, one to one. Who is the only president to hold the office for two non consecutive terms? A, James Garfield, B, William McKinney, or C, Grover Cleveland? <laughs> Repeat that question. Who is the only president to hold the office for two non consecutive terms? Okay. James Garfield, William McKinney, or C. Grover Cleveland? I still don't know the answer, so C. Yes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I thought you repeated it. I would know. Two to know. one. Okay. Felicia's leading by one point, Anna. For more of that clip, you can check out the College Voices YouTube channel or their social medias at the handle below. You can catch new episodes of the College Voice every Friday morning at 11. Kamala Harris is the first woman first black person, and first South Asian to hold the title of vice president-elect. And young girls around the nation see Harris as a role model. CNN's Marlee Ginter spoke with some girls in Utah who are pioneers in their own right about what Harris elections mean to them. Vice President-elect Kamala Harris shattering the glass ceiling, making all dreams possible for generations to come. And if there's a young woman out there who knows what it's like to make the seemingly impossible possible, that's Melissa Mukes. But it's very exciting, and I think she's a great role model for a lot of us um, to kind of see how far we go. The 14-year-old from Davis is one of the first female Eagle Scouts in the country, the highest honor in the Scouts organization, and a position held primarily by males. She's part of a group of young ladies to earn the achievement, paving the way for many more, like her friends Ayisi, who's pushing for the same honor. Now all of them looking to another role model, spending the day talking about the first female vice president-elect and her public service yes. record has been very um, inspiring and awesome for people like me um, who want to achieve what she has achieved later in life. And to the children of our country, regardless of your gender, our country has sent you a clear message. Dream with ambition. A beacon of hope encouraging young women of all backgrounds to dream big. It's pretty cool that we get to ha see her go into office while we're becoming Eagle Scouts. What an amazing story, but that's Absolutely. all we have time for this Monday evening. Thanks for joining us. You can always catch the latest updates and breaking news on KentWire.com or TV2KSU on Twitter. I'm Nadine Bata. And I'm Jenna Borthwick. Have a great night, Portage County, and see you tomorrow at 6. Put the keys down, Kevin. But I'm gonna drive home. There are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. My text to emoji ratio has gotten a little out of hand. A little? Yep, I'm definitely gonna call a ride home. Roll for deceasedness. My dark wizard cast Super Fireball. The wizard has only rolled an eight. Oh, what? This is oh, garbage. A spell. No way. Level like that ten. Doesn't hit a level one I have Are seven. You, uh, you gotta be kidding me. Oh my god. What is going on? Okay. Okay. Cease Jeez. your quarreling, children. Ah! What? No! Ah! What are you doing, you crazy monster? <laughs> Nanny? Oh, is, oh my is it what? God. You should stop being nerds and play d d and be nerds and watch All Systems Go Wednesdays at 9, where we talk everything from movies, games, to anime, and more. Yeah, okay, no, seems yeah. reasonable. <sighs> go watch All Systems Go.